Hi, I'm Rick Dior, and today we're going to be talking about developing technique using rhythmic exercises. Right there, I was playing an underlying pattern of accents under several different kinds of stickings. So today we're going to be using uh, rhythms from both of my books. The first one is the Three Camps book, and that'll be pages 48 and 49. The second one, if you have it, will be the Drum Set book, and that'll correspond to page 7 and 8. So they're both the same, depending on what book you have. I will also try to post uh, pictures of these as the video is going along, uh, if I can do that. So this is an extremely important um, exercise I do with my students. I take lots of different rhythms from several different books, and I have them interpret those with different rudiments, stickings. It helps their reading, and it definitely helps their technique. So uh, this would be a great thing for you to do on a daily basis. We'll start out pretty simple um, with page 48 in the Three Camps book, corresponding to page 7 in the Drum Set book. These are single notes, quarter notes, eighth notes, and sixteenths. <clears throat> now you will need to be able to read some to do this, but just in case you're not a real strong reader, I'll go through the first three lines with the metronome slowly and count them out so you can get a start there. So here we go. We're going to do this a quarter note equals 80. Now you're going to want to put the metronome on 16ths to make sure everything's subdivided. So I'm just going to play the rhythms, nothing underneath it. One, two, three, four. One e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one e and a two e and a three and four. One e and a two and three e and a four. One e and a two and three e and a four. One e and a two, three e and a four. One e and a two and three e and a four. One e and a two and three and four e. One e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one and two and three e and a four. One e, two e, three e and a four e. One e and a two e and a three and four e. One e and a two and three e and a four e and a. So that's the rhythms that we're going to be working with and. Um, also, the next page, I'll do that. I'm going to be working with page 49, the first three lines. So let me play that for you as well. I'll go a little slower since these are more complicated. Here's quarter note equals 70. One, two, three, and four, and one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one e and a two and a three e and a four e and a one e and a two and three e and four e and a one e and two three. And a one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one e and three e and a three and a four e and one and two and three four e and a one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one and two e and a three e and four e and a one e and two e and three e and four e and one e and two and a three e and four and one e and two and a three e and four. Okay, I think I misspoke on one of those, so you'll know where it is. All right, so now we'll go back to page 48, corresponding to page 7 in the drum set book. So the first thing you're going to want to do is play 16th notes under these rhythms. Now what's very important is that you get your height right and your dynamics. So when you do the accents, they're going to be fortissimo, two Fs, very loud. Uh, well, not too loud if you're practicing in a snare drum at home, but a pad, it's okay. But no more than eight inches off that drum. Don't go like this. Just here. That's a good height. Everything else is going to be down here. Ghost note level. Okay? Pianissimo. Two Ps. So here's your dynamic range. Fortissimo. Pianissimo. Okay? Good. So let's try slowly page 48, and I'll count out loud. At quarter note equals 70 with sixteenths. One, two, three, and four, and one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one e and a two e and a three and four e and a one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and one e and a two and a three e and a four e and a one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one e and a two and a three e and a four e and a one e and a two and three and four. And a one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one e and two e and a three e and a four and one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one e and a two and three e and a four e and a one and 
the next page, page 49, corresponding to page 8 in the drum set book. 3 and 4 and 1 the and the 2 the and the 3 the and the 4 and the 3 the 3 3 and the 4 the and the 1 the 2 the and the 3 the and the 4 the and the 1 the 2 the and the 3 the and the 4 the and the 1 the and the 2 the and the 3 the and the 4 the and the 1 the and the 2 the and the 3 the and the 4 the and the 1 the and the 2 the and the 3 the and the 4 the and the 1 the and the 2 the and the 3 the and the 4 the and the 1 the and the 2 the 3 the and the 4 the 1 the and the 2 the and the 3 the and the 4 the 1 the and the 2 the and the 3 the and the 4 the 1 the and the 2 the and the 3 the and the 4 and the 1 the and the 2 the and the 3 the and the 4 and okay so these can go anywhere from from super slow to very fast a very fast tempo might be like 140 um, I do them faster sometimes but uh, you want to still remain relaxed. So let's see if I can do that today. Here's 140. This is page 8 or 49 in three camps. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So you see the stick height and how the accents are kind of shouting out. And that's very important to do that, to be able to play accents uh, within those very soft ghosted notes. So we'll go back a page now to page 48 in the Three Camps book, the single notes. All right, so now we have the 16s. So after that, you want to start doing uh, different rudiments uh, with these. So let's try just doubles, and we'll call these diddles. And we'll try it at quarter note equals 110. And what I'm going to do is each note, each rhythm that's written, I'm going to play a diddle on. So we talked about um, in several other of my videos, relaxed hand technique, and then the traditional grip of how to play these diddles. And you're basically doing a clinch, a relaxed clinch. Each note should have the same value. So in other words, when you do the diddle, it shouldn't be or, it should be. Okay, so it's clean. So here we go, 110. Page 48, single notes. One, two, three, four. So you want to get it as clean as possible, um, again, with that dynamic control. And we'll go to the next page, and we'll do the two-note groupings like that. One, two, ready, play. And that can go pretty fast if you want. You can do that up to, I don't know, 130 maybe? Yeah, it's a try. fast okay but anyway don't sacrifice speed for evenness and relaxation you're not gonna be able to play these if you're using your arms or your shoulders so we'll go back to page single note groupings once again and we'll try something else all right so let's do a long roll I was doing some of this in the intro to this video uh, the long roll is basically a double stroke roll like this and it's very helpful to be able to play accents within that so let's try that. One, two, three, four. OK, 
Okay. And that can go also pretty fast. Not too fast. 120 is a good tempo. So. So on. And the next page, the doubles, two note groupings. All right. Uh, they, they can be sort of exhausting, so don't overdo it. Uh, remember to play slow. I'm just showing you that how fa that is possible to play them fast, but you want to start out. Okay. All right. Very important to do things slowly and with a metronome. Okay. And now we're going to get into the exotic um, things. So uh, one thing I do with my very advanced students is I'll play stick control uh, the first two pages with all these rhythms. In other words, like they'll play those stickings, let's say paradiddles, you know. So... And they'll play these rhythms over on top of it as accents. It's really, really difficult, but tremendous for your technique and interpretive abilities. So if we were going to do that, we would do it like um, slowly. <laughs> Maybe 100. So it be like this. So that's playing page 7 or 48 with paradiddles and then all the rhythms or accents. And again, you can do that with any of the pages. And any of the first two pages of stick control, those stickings. Uh, again, really hard. That's a lifetime's worth of study. I'm always working on one of them. Uh, it's tremendous for your technique and it keeps, keeps you young. Okay. Now the last way we're going to talk about doing this is uh, again, a little bit exotic. It's interpreting the rhythms with different stickings, so improvising stickings. So in this case, we would use triplets. Um, I went over a little of this in the traditional grip video, but uh, stickings, different stickings of triplets. So so right, left, left, or left, right, right, or right, right, left, or left, left, right. All right, and then you would interpret these as triplets. So the first measure would be. Triple a 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 triple So you're swinging them. You're interpreting them as triplets. So if I play that now, oh, by the way, in in the triplet case of the triplets, because it's related to playing jazz, I like to put the metronome on two and four. So like that. See, one, two, one, two, three, four. Right, when that's fast, sounds like this. Again, metronome on two and four. Um, and it's all improvised, so you're not, there's not a set sticking. I, I highly recommend that because in a real setting, that's what you're doing anyway. You're on drum set, you know, you're improvising, you're setting up figures, whatever you're doing, okay? Um, so there's ver very many ways, lots and lots of ways to do these. Uh, another way you might want to do is just do flams, you know? I uh, just came up with that. Let's try that. So we do it at like 
110 be like this. So that's again, that's all improvised, just playing flams, you know, trying to play through as many different rhythmic figures as possible. So I hope this helps. And if you have any questions, you can email me. Again, I'm teaching Skype lessons. Um, I stopped for a while, but I'm doing it again. Uh, so we can do that if you want. But um, I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you got something out of it. Thanks very much.